Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this June 12th of Monday. Thank you for tuning in. Now, I got a lot to cover. I got a good show today, and uh, we're going to get started right away. Uh, let's take a look at uh, one of the things that's going on in the world. The uh, Ukrainian army, uh, their pre breaching vehicles are losing breaching vehicles in Ukraine. And they're leading a, a counteroffensive right now. Uh, it says the engineer battalion of the 33rd Mechanized and the 47th Assault, Assault Brigades, the lead formations in Ukraine's 2023 counteroffensive, suffered heavy equipment losses in their assault just south of Mala. Oh, these names get me, guys. Toramaka. <laughs> I have a hard time sometimes. Why? Look, look, honest to gosh. You know, I, I, T, how do you pronounce T O K M A C H K A? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it says the losses include at least five of the battalion's specialized engineered vehicles, and they were equipped with mine plows and mine rollers. Uh, they're losing a lot of tanks and stuff, you know, and uh, they're coming up against heavy resistance. And what it is is the Russians have dug in. And this is what I told you guys. Uh, when they actually quite literally dig into the ground, uh, they did this in World War One, And uh, they called these things foxholes. And they also dug trenches. And they called it trench warfare. World, World War One, they did a lot of trench warfare. Trenches... Uh, it's tanks can roll over trenches, but it's not easy to roll over a trench, especially if it's a wide one with a tank. And sometimes, if, the t if it's too wide, the trench is too wide, the front end of the tank will dip because of the center of gravity. It'll dip down into the trench, and it, and it can cause a tremendous amount of problems. And I imagine the Russian trenches are really wide. They had a lot of time to dig. Anyway. Moving on here. In Philadelphia, uh, now you guys know, in the Northeast or and in the, in the East, on the East Coast of the United States of America, I-95 is one of your main thoroughfares. It goes all the way from Maine all the way down to Florida. And they carry tremendous amounts of uh, trucks. Oh my gosh, the trucks that use I-95. Well, I-95 collapsed in a certain area in Pennsylvania. And now that's saying it's going to take a very long time to fix. Here's a picture of the collapse and rebar, stra twisted rebar and everything else. So this is going to cause interruptions, waiting, uh, traffic jams, rerouting for trucks and things like that. Just be aware of this fact. Now, I want to talk about something else. We're going to go into the, the weird stuff now. But it's real. It's weird, but it's real. I mean, it's, it's hard to get your head around some of this stuff. But it's a mystery of our first interstellar visitor. And they think they've solved it. Now, you guys don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... Oh, it's another name's heart Omaomao or something like that it's it's it was a it was a big rock that, they say it was a rock but i'm not so sure and in the artist's illustrations now i've driven hundreds of artists illustrations of this thing and they always draw it as a rock but it's actual shape looking at it through the telescopes looking at it what they've actually seen is a cigar shaped thing and so the artists have tried to draw the cigar as a rock. They may have tried to make it look like a rock. And this is intentional because when they look through the telescopes, they see this thing of light. It's like a, it's an image of light, but they know the shape of it. And they also have a, a rough idea of the size of it. It's really big, right? But what's unusual about it, it was the first interstellar visitor we've had in in forever i mean we've never had one before all the time we've been alive all of a sudden boom you get an interstellar visitor now what's even makes it more unusual is that this object this interstellar visitor 
is accelerating through space. And they cannot figure out it's got some sort of acceleration. It's accelerating through space to speeds of 200,000 miles per hour. And they're like scratching their heads and how does a rock accelerate? Uh, does it got an engine on it? How's it doing this? Has it got propulsion? It's got propulsion. It's got an engine on it of some sort. How's it doing this? And they just can't not accept one thing that should be maybe obvious. I don't know. Maybe obvious. But to me, anyway, I, I my mind is like, how does something accelerate through space? So they're coming up with all these different answers to try to figure out. And now they say, that's why they say solved. Mystery of the first interstellar visitor might be solved. And so what they're saying it is, is, uh, where is it here? It said uh, that they're, uh, it says hydrogen expelled by Oma, Oma, how, Oma, Amua, Amua. That's how they spell it. Yeah, that's it right there. Amua, Amua. That's, that's how you spell it. The hydrogen expelled by Amua, Amua explains its orbit and lack of typical comet tail. Explains its acceleration. So I guess they're thinking that hydrogen is coming out and jetting out from the rock somehow, and it's a rock, and the hydrogen is jetting out from it somehow, and it's causing constant acceleration. Well, I got a, I got a little bit of a, a puzzle here. Okay, so this thing's going 200,000 miles per hour. Now, we have rocket engines, jet engines, and we have propulsion, and we've been working on it for ages now. We've been working on it the whole 20th century and, and into the 21st century. We've been, and this is what Elon Musk does. I mean, he, he has SpaceX, and he works on propulsion systems for his rockets. And we've only been able to achieve, through the best of our propulsion systems, 57,000 miles per hour. That's the top end of what we've been able to achieve. But somehow, this interstellar visitor has been just, by chance, the hy hydrogen jets on this rock have been able to achieve 200,000, four times as fast, faster than four times as fast as our fastest rockets. Now, how a rocket works is it has a combustion chamber and it expels a hot gas out through the combustion chamber through a nozzle. Now, somehow, nature has just made some sort of a combustion chamber on this thing, right? It's able to achieve four times faster than our fastest rockets just by expelling hydrogen somehow. This is their explanation. Now, the thing I see about it is, uh, just, just me, my thing is, they cannot accept any other explanation than a natural explanation. And so they're going with the natural explanation, no matter how, no matter in examination of this natural explanation, no matter how ludicrous it sounds, it's hydrogen jets being expelled by this rock. But guess what, guys? We got another one. Now remember, for all this time, our whole lifetime's never been any interstellar visitors. We got another one. Newly discovered. And this is NASA website right here. Newly discovered uh, uh, comet is likely an interstellar visitor. And here it comes. Here comes another one swooping into our solar system. Right? And I've been hearing through the grapevine. I don't know. I can't confirm this. It's just... I've been hearing it through the grapevine. I, I, I have been trying to confirm it, but I haven't been able to confirm it yet. That Oma Mawa Wawu, or whatever it's called, Oma Mama. Ma, I had it a minute ago. Oma Hama. Why do they name these things like that? Anyway, the first one that came through our solar system. I heard it through the grapevine that it stopped and it's turned around coming back. That's what I heard through the grapevine. Now, I can't confirm that. Can't confirm or deny it. I don't know if it's true or not. But we got another one swooping in here. 
uh, it's another interstellar visitor. And it looks like, if, if that's true, maybe they're converging. The two of them. Right? Now, this one is newly discovered comet is excited the astronomical community this week because it appears to have originated from outside the solar system. The object designated C-219 Q4 was discovered on August 30th, 2019. This one was discovered. And anyway, it's coming in too. And there's another one. So we got two of them. Well, you know what? If that was all true, I don't know if this is everything, so don't go getting excited or anything about what I'm telling you because I'm not sure if it's true or not. But if it was true, Omanua, uh, uh, I can just give you a uh, Omanua or whatever in the heck they call it, the first one that came through. If it went into space and accelerated past us and went by us, right? Let's just say, let's just theoretically say that it was an alien visitor, an alien spacecraft. It was a scout. And it flew on by us, a scout, observed us, checked out everything on the other side of space, stopped its engines, turned around, come back through our solar system. You know what that reminds me of? It's like when a cop drives by you on the freeway, you know, and he's checking you out. And then all of a sudden... He stops, turns around, his lights come on. <laughs> what does that mean, guys? It means you're going too fast or you ran a stop sign or something like that. And he's coming back for you. <laughs> well, that, I mean, I'm just saying, just saying. I mean, all this is pure speculation. It's just maybe, a, a, maybe my mind working too hard on this and thinking about it too much, but... <laughs> We got two of them, one coming in from each side. And the, one's going to arrive around, the, I think it's the 27th of October. And the other one's turning around, going to come back. Maybe, maybe. I mean, that's just rumors I've heard. So we're just going to have to wait and see on this. But you never know. I mean, there was this thing that happened just a few days ago in Las Vegas. Around, I think it was in Las Vegas. Anyway, there's this blue green light that come down out of the sky, and they, people saw it, said they saw 10-foot-tall aliens running around in their backyard, or 8-foot-tall aliens running around in their backyard. What the heck was that all about? <laughs> and, I mean, that made the press, you know? So, so this is the age of weird things happening in the world right now. It's very strange things happening right now. Uh, but now we're going to come back down to Earth. And we're going to talk about uh, the markets now. Uh, taking a look at silver right now. It's dropping like a stone right now. $23.99. We just saw a $0.28 cent drop in the price of silver. Uh, meanwhile, over on the Shanghai uh, Gold Exchange and stuff over there, uh, they're 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 chewing up the silver and gold, and they're buying it up as fast fast as they can get it. And they're sucking uh, silver's being all sucked up, but the price is dropping. Gold, we're looking at up ten cents. Is that ten cents? Well, I think it's soon going to turn negative on the gold chart. But we're at nineteen sixty on gold. Taking a look at cryptocurrencies today, and Bitcoin is at 25,902, and Ethereum is at 1744. So they've taken a little bit of a beating over the last number of days. You know, generally, what happens, generally speaking, is in a market, you generally get three bottoms made before you go back into a bull. It tests the bottom about three times, maybe even more, you know. Dow Jones Industrial Average today is up 43 points at 33,876. Taking a look at uh, crude oil is at 68.15. It's down $2.02. Bonds and rates today. 
Uh, we're at uh, we're down. Yields are falling, but not by a lot. U.S. 10-year at 3.72. It's fell 1.8 basis points. And the U.S. 30 years at 3.86. It's fell 2 basis points. And finishing off with the U.S. dollar is at 103.45. Now, what we else we got going on in all this woo-woo stuff, or alien stuff that's going on, is... The Pentagon, a while ago, this is a few months back, they admitted that they got films, actual films, real films, of these unknown crafts. And they called it the Tic Tac or whatever. They, they Tic Tac, no, Tic Tac, they called it. And they show, they've released the films to the public. And that was a few months back. And now we got whistleblowers coming forth saying that they got craft, 12 alien crafts stored away. So, for the scientific community, you know, that's looking at the telescope at these interstellar visitors, they should inter start entertaining the possibility in their minds that these might not be rocks. Because, one, the shape of them, an elongated cigar shape, is not typically a shape you find in nature. And, number two... Acceleration to 200,000 miles per hour. See, you know, typically when you get an asteroid or something, a rock going through space, they travel rather fast. They get pulled by gravity. That accelerates them. Like they'll swing around the sun or whatever, and the sun will give them a whipping effect. And, and it's just like, you know, when you play crack the whip or whatever, and they can get up to speeds like 26,000 miles per hour, 30,000. That's typical speeds for asteroids and stuff. And they have stored kinetic energy, and when they hit the Earth, they can explode and do a big, make a big crater, even a small one. Well, you've all seen shooting stars at night. They're traveling like 25, 30,000 miles per hour, and they go shoo across the sky, and they make this like pretty, they're pretty, a shooting star. You've all seen that at night. That's a small little asteroid or meteor hitting the Earth. It burns up. As it, as it goes through the friction of, of our atmosphere. Well, uh, that's, that, that's a typical speed. Maybe up to 50,000 miles per hour. It's typical speed. But this thing was four times that fast. And it, why is because it's got something accelerating it. They saw acceleration. And they're trying to say, well, acceleration comes from jets of gas, you know. Um, but no, you need, honest to gosh, you need to have some sort of a, a, a combustion chamber to really be effective at accelerating in space. Well, the scientific community knows this. So, so maybe it's time, with all this stuff that's come forward, maybe it's time to start entertaining thoughts and uh, possibilities and be rational about all this, not try to explain it all away, but to say, hey, entertain the possibility, could this actually be something from interstellar, interstellar space that we don't understand, some other form of life that's intelligent, created something that can travel through space? If we can do it, why can't some other... I mean, I'm just speculating, guys, but they get encrusted in their way of thinking the scientific community. And if anybody breaks with that line of logic, then they expel them from their community. And so they all have to toe the line. Otherwise, their funding or their grants, if they even mention the word alien, their grants would dry up. They'll say, well, this guy's nuts. This guy believes in aliens. <laughs> that's, that's the way the peer pressure in our society works. Is scientific research sometimes doesn't follow logic because of peer pressure within the scientific community. If they find something that goes, uh, that doesn't go along with, and, and this was the same way in the Middle Ages, you know, they, they, these different ones like, you know, Copernicus and all, all these ones that lived back in when times, you know, some of them, they locked them up and they threatened to kill them if they did, if they even mentioned the truth, what real, what's really going on. They, they believe that the earth revolved around the sun and that was their dogma of the day, and by God, they were going to stick by it. 
Well, no, not the Earth revolved around. I got that mixed up. I mean that the Earth was the center of the universe. That's what I meant to say. Sorry, guys. <laughs> they believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. And if anybody said anything different, well, we got a rack. You know? You want to go on there and rack and try it out? It's a nice ride. <laughs> anyway, listen, guys. Thank you guys for listening to my show. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. And have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.